mom says month of the military child, and it is in April. It actually became in 1986. Department of Defense made it an official celebration month. I like being a military child because you get to move around and make new friends all around the world and know that your parents are supporting the nation. I don't like leaving friends and family. That's really hard for me. I like getting to know people from different religions. Uh, some people have lived that place for their whole lives and others have moved around one year at a time. Just acknowledge their sacrifices and tell them you appreciate them because they didn't sign up for the military, you did. They're just along for the ride. The Delaware Air National Guard is receiving $17.5 million in federal funding to replace the current Air National Guard fuel cell and corrosion control hangar. The ability to fully enclose the C-130 aircraft, insulation, and an adequate lighting system. Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester says the National Guard provides services both locally and globally, pointing to their efforts working at Delaware COVID testing sites and providing humanitarian aid worldwide. The ability for them to have a safe space to work and um, make sure that the equipment that they're using is actually up to standard uh, really affects every single Delawarean every single Delaware. The current hangar is one of two required for the maintenance of C-130 aircrafts, which provide tactical airlift and airdrop of troops, cargo, and passengers across the globe. Quinn Kirkpatrick, Delaware Public Media. If you think one voice can't make a difference, Steve can tell you otherwise. This Delaware librarian is a naval history buff, and in 2012, when he heard the Navy was going to order new submarines, he wrote a letter to his local newspaper asking that one of the subs be named for the first state. I, I keep a, a, a database of ships. And I knew that the name Delaware hadn't been applied to a ship in over 100 years. And then I think that the, the thing that the, the sentence that got everybody's attention was, and I know our vice president is too shy to ask for it himself. Source of argument. Continues. Well, Delaware Senator Tom Carper saw the letter in the paper. He's a proud Navy man, and he called up the secretary of the Navy and said, yep, we'd like to have it named for Delaware. So, let me think about it. I'll call you back. Gosh, two or three months later, he called back and said, we're going to build five of Virginia class submarines. The first one off the, uh, the line will be the USS Delaware. After a couple years under construction in Newport News, Virginia, the 377-foot-long nuclear attack sub that can run for 30 years without refueling was finally ready to get wet. Dr. Jill Biden originally christened the sub, but due to COVID shutdowns, this weekend will finally be the real commissioning ceremony in Wilmington. And you know Steve will be there. He's also getting a personal tour of the sub that 135 crew members will call home, whether on the surface or down 800 feet below the waterline. If you think your call to an elected official or a letter to a paper can't make a difference, well, a $2 billion submarine now says Delaware on its side because Steve spoke up. Is, is a way of saying at least they know what I think. Constructive in the sense of, I think there's a solution to this. I recognize it may not be the only one, uh, but here it is. Tim Furlong, NBC10 News. I'm Captain Christine Laraca, and I am in the Delaware Army National Guard in the Medical Readiness Detachment, where I serve as a physician. And I also own my own practice here in Greenville, Delaware, as a family medicine physician who specializes in obesity, which is weight loss management. I joined um, the Delaware Army National Guard uh, just over 16 years ago. I had the opportunity to deploy with the 153rd as a combat medic, and that was a great experience uh, right before I started medical school. And I had four years of medical school and then three years of residency in family medicine and just found this deep passion for medicine with wanting to serve soldiers. So that was my initial inspiration. And then throughout that process, I recognized that a lot of soldiers and humans, civilians, right, everyone struggles with their health in some capacity. And whether that's people in the army putting themselves last because they wanna serve everyone else, their community and whoever needs them, their families. And I was helping a lot of soldiers with their weight management and then started to reflect this in my practice in the clinic as well, civilian side and really found a passion for doing this and helping people reach their ideal weight by achieving their ideal health. 
I think that I inspire soldiers and other medical professionals to follow their heart and do what they really want to do. In our country, in our society, in our community, for a while we've had the mentality that you need to follow a certain progression to be successful. What's really more important than that is really doing what you love. And it sounds so cliche, if we're going to pick what we do based off of time or money, it's never truly going to be worth it. If you really enjoy what you're doing, the money will follow and you can figure out the time and work life balance. 